Before we continue looking at the interfaces and classes uh, in the collections framework, it's uh, worth covering the comparable and comparator interfaces or comparator interfaces. Now the collections framework includes classes that sort their elements. So uh, as to really use those properly, we need to understand how that works in order to create our own classes that we can use or we can store in sorted collections. Now in the previous videos, we implemented the comparable interface so that we could experiment with the collections.sort and reverse methods. So you've already seen how easy it is to create the one required method to the, uh, of the interface, which of course was the compare to method. So we'll continue using the theater example because the seats give us a reasonably sized data set to play with. And secondly, because it's generated for us by the theater's class constructor, so it's actually less typing. Now, uh, we've left a lot of unnecessary code in there though. So what we'll do is we'll start cleaning things up a little bit to make things a little bit tidier. And I uh, have to say that I've been guilty of bad practice in the past. So we've made the seat collections object public. We talked about uh, the reasons, I talked about the reasons why we did that in the previous video. And of course that was because it's easier to see what we were dealing with, whether the actual seats collection without confusing things by having to get a getter, return the list of seats, etc. But that's really bad practice. So for the remaining examples, we'll set it back to private. And we'll use a proper get seats method to do so. So we can go back to the theater class now. And firstly, we're going to make sure that the seats variable is private. So down here, we're going to change or up here the public definition back to private. And we should still be using an array list, which we are. And the other thing we could do, if you remember, we copy and paste the code from the Java uh, sort method itself from the collections framework. We're going to take it back and put back in our original uh, binary search co uh, code again that we originally came up with, even though it wasn't terribly efficient. But we'll put that back in replacing this code there. And what we did was I introduced another variable here. So consequently that constructor is not working. So what we're going to do is introduce a field called price and we'll modify the constructor to allow that to work as well. So we're going to go down to our seat definition and we'll make that a private as well. Remember we set that to public in the previous video. So we're going to also add the variable for price. So private double price. Then we'll change the constructor as well. So the constructor, accept, uh, constructor accepts that as a parameter as well. So double price, oops, wrong method. Of course, it's the constructor I was trying to do. So double price, and then we'll do this dot price equals price, like so. The other thing we're going to do is add that getter we talked about, uh, the getter for the seats, because we haven't uh, got that public anymore. So we'll do the getter, and we've already got one, of course, because we called this get seats, which was for our testing. So what we'll do is we'll change this uh, definition now. We'll change it to a collection seat. And then we're going to just return instead of going through that loop, we'll do a return seats. Seats, like so. And down the bottom, we've also, this is of the inner class, the seat class. We've got a getter for seat number. Let's also add a getter for our price, which we've just added, like so. And I'll just clean that code up down the bottom a little bit, remove all those extra spaces now. Okay, so finally, let's go back and look at the uh, theater class again, which is the constructor. Because we've got an error there, as you can see there. Now the constructor at the moment doesn't deal with price at all. So let's look at changing that. So what we're going to do is, uh, we've got the same code in there to, that does the generation. So the first bit of code here, we're gonna charge a different price depending on what level. So we're going to set a price of $12 for the seats, but if the seats are near the middle of the first three rows, the price increases to $14, and seats in the back two rows or on the edges of the seat of the theatre, I should say, only cost $7. So let's go ahead and change that code. So we're going to go through our for loop like we've done there, but then we need to put a few tests in here. So we're going to start off with a price of $12, so double price equals $12, 12 12.00. Then we'll put an if test in there. So we'll put if, if row is less than D and remember the first three rows so that's A, B and C we're going to charge a separate price of 14 for we're going to put and seat num is greater than or equal to 4 and seat num is less than or equal to 9 oops sorry less than or equal to 9 we're going to make price equals 14. So that's those first three rows and obviously ignoring the three seats on the edges. If you're in those first three rows and you're not on the edges, then you're going to pay $14 because that's considered a premium sort of seat. And otherwise, 
if we're getting towards the back, so if rho is greater than f, the f rho, or the seat num is less than four, so again, we're on an edge, or seat num is greater than nine. So in those cases, you're gonna get a discount. The price is going to be $7. Then what we need to do then is for our constructor, because we changed the constructor for seat, we need to add the price to it and pass that through, which ultimately is going to be saved in the seat object. So you can see what we've done there. We've Again, what we've done is we've set the base price of $12 uh, for the seats. As you can see that on line 18. But if a seat's near the middle of the first three rows, the price increases to 14 And you can see that uh, we started doing that on line 20. However, seats in the back two rows or on the edges of the theatre only cost seven. So edges is defined as the first three seats, actually the first three seats on the left-hand side, remembering that they're numbered to 0, 1, 2, and the last three seats on the right-hand side. If that's the case, you pay only $7 for it. So now that we've done all that, we should be able to start experimenting with our changes. So what I'm going to do, we've got a lot of code in here. The main class does contain a lot from our earlier experimentation. So what I'm going to do is delete all but the initial reservations part and then the print list method itself is going to stay this okay so I'm going to delete the sort list which we don't need I'm also going to delete the uh, some of this extra code up here really the only things we want to keep is the initial reservations and we'll change this reference for the array list we're not going to be using that anymore and we're going to change this seat uh, copy because that doesn't exist anymore instead we're going to do theater or if, actually I'll delete that entire line because the other code is actually already there. And I'll change that to private. I should go really go back and change that because we're going to still be using that print list to public again. That's the seat uh, in a class. So I'll change that to a public, but not the uh, seat uh, objects or list of objects in the array list. That's still going to be private. So this one's going to be public so we can access that class from main, like so. And just to be different, we'll do another seat number, D12. D12. And we'll put another one in there as well. And let's just do, say, B13. Confirm it's uh, going to can't give us an error. B13. Okay, so that's our basic uh, code now. So let's also now change the price. So for the print list method, what we'll do is we'll add a price in there. So at the moment we've got it printing the seat number, let's also print out the price. We'll put plus space plus, and it'll be seat dot get price. So let's just run a couple of these scenarios and just check that uh, the price is gonna be correct. And I've got an extra bracket in there, probably from some of the code I was deleting, and I'll just clean it up a little bit. Okay, so we can just run that just to confirm that it's working. Please pay for D12, there's no seat B13. And obviously if we run this again, we copy that again. The second time we should come up and say that it's already reserved. Seat already reserved. So it's working back again how it should have worked in the past. And in terms of how it works, because the seat class itself implements comparable, we have to override the compare to method. And that's often a very simple thing to do. So a compare to method should return a number less than zero if the object should sort less than the object that it's been compared to. And if we have a look back at our theater code, looking at the compare to method there on line 63, it's seat in our example, which was passed to this method. And, and then it should return a number greater than zero if we should sort greater than the object that's been compared to. And of course, if the two objects are equal, the method needs to return zero. Now, because this is exactly what the string.compare to function method does, and string.compare to ignore case methods does as well, because that's just the same, but it's just ignoring the case uh, in letters of the alphabet, we can use that to implement our comparison. Now, if you were creating a compare to method for a class that's got more than one key field, such as people's names, for example, you know, where you probably want to sort first on surname and then on first name when people share the same surname, you just perform a test of surnames and return a negative or positive number as appropriate. Then if the surnames are equal, instead of returning zero, you then test the first name and return negative, zero or positive, depending on how the first name is compared. So in other words, as long as the compare to method works as we've described, the objects implementing it can be sorted as we saw. And again, if we go back to our code, just to verify that, we can put list 
it's going to be theater dot seats or seat I should say reverse seats your array list our theater dot get seats remember we did this previously and then do collections dot reverse reverse seats then we grab it to do a print list reverse seats and by doing that we can obviously see now and I've got the pricing there as well we can obviously see now that the sort is working because in this case it's starting now from the basically the opposite of the standard sort we've done a reverse sort starting at the highest element first and working down so clearly what I'm saying is that the compare to method that's been implemented currently is working just fine now with that said there's also another way to use the sort method and that's the pass it a comparator or comparator depending on how you pronounce it so it's similar to a comparable the comparator interface defines a single method called compare unlike comparable the objects to be sorted don't have to be implemented or don't have to implement comparator instead an object of type comparator can be created with a compare method that can sort the objects we're, that we're interested in in this case it's seats of course and more than one comparator can be created and that allows for objects to be sorted in different ways which is pretty cool so we can either create a, a comparator object within an existing class or we could create a new class that implements the comparator interface so let's have a go at the first way using an anonymous in a class within theater so I'm going to go back to our theater class which we're already on and just up here right at the top I'm going to add static static final comparator and it's going to be seat and price underscore order is what we're going to call it and equals new comparator and you can see that's automatically come up and told so it's showing us which field we need to override and what we're going to do is change the references there from O1 to S1 it's a little bit more readable we know it's seat one let's actually call it the full thing that it should be seat one seat two and instead of returning zero we need to actually add this uh, to check a particular field so what we're going to do in this one is we're going to check the price so we're going to sort in other words by the price of the tickets or the seats so we're going to put uh, if s1 dot get price is less than s2 dot get price seat 2 I should say and then we're going to return negative 1 else if s1 dot get price is greater than s2 or seat 2 dot get price we're going to return 1 otherwise of course they're equal so we're going to return zero so that's how simple that compared uh, method can be now just to be clear what we're doing on line 12 it may look like we're instantiating the comparator interface but remember from section 10 that uh, it's an anonymous inner class implementing a comparator and it's providing an implementation of the single compare method and uh, as you saw the compare method itself is fairly straightforward it has to return the same results as the compare to method does uh, as we previously discussed in other words negative if uh, seat one is less than that seat two zero if they're equal and of course positive if seat one is greater than seat two now with that said note there's a serious problem with this method and uh, if you intend to use uh, comparator please make sure you finish this lecture first because I'm going to be discussing the problem soon because there is something major you need to be aware of so to see this in action uh, what we need to do is create a new array list of seats we need to add a couple of seats to the list and then we need to sort in order of price with the cheapest seats first by passing our new uh, comparator to the collections.sort method so let's go and do that so I'll go back to main and just down here so we'll, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll add a new uh, list uh, here a new list of seats so new list theater dot seat and it's going to be we'll call this one price seats equals new array list and it's going to be theater.get seats which we've done before so we've got a copy of our elements now so what we're going to do is actually add a couple of seats we're going to do price seats dot add you'll see why in a minute theater dot new seat and remember the weird syntax to instantiate in a class b00 and we'll call it 1300 for the price and then prices are price seats dot add theater dot new and again it's seat using that weird inner class syntax to create the constructor a00 and 13 as well 
Next we'll do the sort. So we can do that by typing collections dot sort. And it's going to be price seats, which is obviously the list we want to sort on. And then it's going to be theatre dot price order. So we're passing it again just to go back to make sure that it was clear. Comparator as well. And that's our comparator now, which we created, which of course was price order. And now if we print the list after that, price seats, we can see what's happened. And just to make this a little bit clearer, the readability, I'll put a dollar sign there just so we know that that is a price. Uh, let's now try running that. And we've actually got an error there. It was just a typo. I wasn't really paying attention. So we'll try that again. And obviously another problem here. And actually that should have been a semicolon because we've got our comparator and needed to have a semicolon to finish off that definition. So third time lucky, we'll try running that again now. And you can see that's a little bit better now. And we'll just give ourselves a bit of space looking at the last entry. Now the seats are listed in price order. And it's worth noting that the sort routine used is guaranteed to be stable. What that means is that the elements won't be swapped if they don't need to be, so that all seats with the same price appear in seat number order, and that's because, oh, because that's how they were entered. Now the two new seats also appear in the original order, so B00 becomes bef before A00, because that's the order they were added to the list. So if we just go back and have a look, again this is in price order, so we need to go right to the end to see those uh, entries. So the price of 13, and there you can see B, then A, 13. And again, B, 0, 0 comes before A, 0, 0 because that's the order they're added to in the list. So I came back to the code. We added that entry first, line 36, B before A. And again, the way that this uh, sort routine works, it don't, the elements aren't swapped if they don't need to be. So in this case, we're looking at the uh, comparator was purely based on price. If we go back and check that out again, we're just doing a comparison just on price, which of course is why it's not looking at the seat number to determine any sort of sort criteria. And again, the way it works is if they are equal, the price was equal, they don't get moved. Of course, that helps performance by not moving things unless you really have to. So we've still got a lot to talk about. Now we can add as many comparators as we want. And uh, so we could include one to list the highest price seats first for argument's sake. So the comparator doesn't have to be static, but uh, it makes it easy to use if we don't need a class instance in order to use it. And in this example, as you can see on line 38, we made the comparator a static variable of the theater class, and that's because the theater class is controlling all access to the seats. But uh, thinking about it, it could have made more sense to include it in the seat class itself. Uh, instead, especially if seat wasn't, uh, was not an inner class. But had we done that, there would have been no seat instance available in main to call on. So static would, uh, for that reason, would be a lot more convenient. And just as a digression, before we look at the problem with our comparator's compare method, there's an interesting suggestion IntelliJ makes about the comparator. So clicking on its definition in the theatre class, IntelliJ will show you a suggested light bulb. So we go back and do that. So if we click the definition, you can see that IntelliJ is coming up with a couple of ideas. The one here that is interesting is split into declaration and initialization. So we'll go ahead and, and accept that uh, suggestion just to see what happens. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see what's happened there. The declaration of price order becomes a, st a standard static final declaration, but IntelliJ then inserts a static initialization block into the code that initializes the price order comparator. Now, we only recently discussed static initialization blocks, so it's quite good to see a practical use for it, as you can see in this scenario here. Okay, so I'm going to end the video here. I was going to talk about the final issue with the compare method, but we'll leave that to the next video, given how long this video is going for. So we'll see you in the next video.